This is a review of the 7th grade math star test. This is the release version from 2013 spring. And it can be found on the website www.tea.state.texas.us. And that's Texas with the TX. Okay, I'm going to go through each question and just briefly explain my uh, approach to answering the question. I'm going to try to keep it short and straight to the point. And I won't read every single question. I'll run the camera over the question. So if you need to read it, just take a quick pause and read it. This first one, it has a graph of a route. And it says, which order pair represents a point on the route? I look through each of these. I try to find the one that's on here. 0, negative 3. 0 is here. Then go down to negative 3. Not on the route. Negative 3, 6. Negative 3 is the X, then 6 is the Y, go up here, that's nowhere near the route. 3, 4, go over to 3, then up 4, close, but not it. 3, 8, go over to 3, and up 8, okay, that's on the route. That means answer choice is D. Okay, second question. Angelo's pet rabbit weighs 1 pound less than twice the weight of Carmen's pet. Okay, stop there. Twice weight of Carmen's rabbit. Okay, that means two times something. Okay, so look at the answer choices. Two times something, two times something. Not here, not here. So that means your answer choices are F and G. <clears throat> so the rabbit weighs one pound less than twice the weight. So after that, after two times the weight, you need to subtract one because it's less, minus one. That leaves G as the best answer. <clears throat> Number three, the triangles shown below are similar. Okay. Which line segment corresponds to AC? AC is over here. Okay, I use whatever landmarks are there. I look at this little, I'll just call it a rainbow. And over here, this right angle. AC it has a rainbow and a right angle. Okay, I look over here. I try to find the one that matches that rainbow right angle. Not two rainbows, just one. So EF goes with AC. Once again, look at the landmarks. Rainbow, square. AC, rainbow, square, EF. So I'm looking for EF. That's answer choice B. Okay, rectangular prism. It has a volume, it has the length, it has the width. It's just missing the height of this trunk. Okay. <clears throat> Basically, to find volume, you use the formula. Okay, the formula is V equals capital B times H. And in rectangular prisms, to find the capital B, that which is, which is base area, you just find the area of a rectangle, L times W. And at the end, put H. Okay, so length times width times height. Okay, from the problem, the volume was 18. I put 18 underneath V. Length and width were 6 and 2, respectively. So that's 2 times 6. And I don't know the height, so I put H as it is. Then I go ahead and multiply 2 times 6, <coughs> which is 12. And I still need to find H. So 12 times H will give me 18. <clears throat> to find what H is, I have to divide 18 by 12. Okay. And what I can do is just simplify 18 over 12. They can both be divided by 6. So 18 divided by 6, 3. And 12 divided by 6, 2. 3 over 2. Which is... Hmm, not here. Okay. Number five. Jackie has a puzzle book that contains 65 puzzles. She has completed two thirds of the puzzles in the book. Okay. 
If Jackie completes 13 more puzzles, what is the total number of puzzles she would have completed in the book? <clears throat> okay, so first off, two fifths of 65, then add in 13 more. Two fifths of 65 means two fifths times 65. <clears throat> two times 65, if you do the math, you would get 130, and then on the bottom, okay, when this happens, just put a 1 underneath 65 so you can multiply straight across. 5 times 1 is 5, okay? And then do 130 divided by 5. 130 divided by 5. Okay, 26. That's how many she did at the beginning, and then she completed 13 more. I add in 13. Because remember, I said she did 13 more. 26 plus 13 is 39. And then it says, what is the total number of puzzles that she would have completed in the book? Well, let's see. Yep, 39 is there in answer choice C. It's the exact same work that I did. Multiply by 2 fifths at 13. Okay. And your answer is C. Question number six, it gives you a table that shows how much Melissa ran during three weeks while training for a race. It says which statement is best supported by the data in the table, okay? When it comes to these type of questions where you have to pick the correct or not correct statement, I had to look through each one and check is, for example, F, true or false, okay? so. F says the total number of minutes Melissa ran in week 3 is twice the total number of minutes she ran in week 1. Okay, so I need to look at week 1 and 3 totals. That means add all of these across the row in week 1 and do the same thing in week 3. I've already done that on a separate sheet of paper, so I'll go over there. And I didn't write the numbers here, I just wrote the totals, which is a lot of what the answer is asking for. So week 1 total, go across. 69 and week 3 which is 138 69 times 2 because it says twice the total number of minutes in week 1 okay 69 times 2 18 carry 1 2 times 6 12 plus 1 is 13 138 okay so that is twice so F is a good answer it's probably D answer I'll just make sure G and H and J are not correct first Total number of minutes Melissa ran each day decreased from week one to week two. Okay, let's see. Week one to two. That's increasing, increasing, that's decreasing, increasing, increasing, stays the same, increasing. So for the most part, the total number of minutes Melissa ran each day did not decrease. A lot of it is just increasing. So G is not a good choice. H, total number of minutes Melissa ran in week three is more than the total number of, of minutes she ran in weeks one and two combined. Okay, let's see. Let's see, week three is 138. So if I added week one and two, 69 and 99, uh, that's no way this is going to be, no way this 138 is more than that. So far, 69 is about 70, 99 is about 100, 100 plus 70 is 170. So that answer to H is not true. J, the total number of minutes Melissa ran each week increased by about 5 minutes per week. 5 minutes per week increase. Okay, so I look at the totals from each week, week 1, 2, and 3 going across the rows. It, from 69 to 99, that's not an increase by 5. That's about an increase by 30. It goes up by 30. And here, definitely not an increase by 5. So, J is out. All the three below here are incorrect. So, F is the correct answer. Which arithmetic sequence is represented by the 
expression 3n plus 1, where n represents the position of determining the sequence. Okay, with these sequences, okay, to get the numbers, you just start with first term will be the number 1 is what you put in. Okay, the number 1 is what you put in to the expression. Then, so, these are the number 1s here. Then the second term will be the number 2s. You put 2 into the expression and then see what you get. And here are the number 2. So, let's look at the work here. Expression, first I put in 1, 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. Then I put in 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. Okay, then I put in 3 and I get 10, put in 4 I get 13. So my sequence should look like this. 4, then 7, then 10, then 13. Okay, remember that was 4, then 7, then 10, then 13. Okay, and that's D. Number 8. List below shows the number of minutes Addison spent reading on each of six days. There's a list. It says which two measures best describe the total number or the typical number of minutes Addison spent reading each day. Okay, typical. That means how much or typical number each day means just in other words how much per day. So this these are different results from each day to find per day you just take the average which is called mean and that leaves only a or f and g as answer choices so the next one mode and median okay mode means the most the number that shows up the most and then median means the middle number if it's talking about typical okay it's talking about frequent frequently okay the same number frequently that's mode okay whatever number appears the most that would make more sense here than the middle number so the average and the one that occurs the most f is the best answer for question eight okay for question nine of the 250 sheep in a flock 34 percent are white what is the total number of white sheep in the flock <clears throat> to find percent of a number you just take the percent change it to a decimal multiply by the number okay I've done that over here 250 sheep 34 percent change it to a decimal then multiply 4 times 0 4 times 5 carrier 2 4 times 2 plus 2 is 8 oh sorry 4 times 2 is 8 plus number 10 the diagram below shows length of center of a wind turbine to the tip of its blades. Which of these is closest to the total area covered by the blade when the turbine makes one revolution? Okay, total area of the circle using the radius. Use the formula of pi r squared. Put in 32 for the radius. Okay, it looks like this. Area equals pi r squared. 32 is the radius. Put that in. That's the first thing you need to do. 32 squared. And that gives you 1024. And from there, multiply 1024 times pi. Or, in other words, 3.14. <clears throat> when you multiply these, it's like doing 3 times 1,000. And that's about 3,000. 3 times 1,000 is about 3,000. So looking at the answer choices, there's only one that's remotely close to 3,000, that's F.